Hey everybody, welcome to the Gentleman Scholars Club. Now, one of the first things that happens when you develop an interest in style, whether it's classic men's style or really any sort of style, is that you develop more seasonality in your wardrobe at the same time. Now by that, I don't mean that you suddenly go out and buy more shorts in the summer or more sweaters in the winter. That may happen, but what I'm really talking about is doing research and developing knowledge of specific cloths, fabrics, materials, weaves that you can wear in certain seasons. For instance, in the summer, you might determine to wear linen trousers, hop sack, sport coats. In the winter, you might pick up flannel tweed, right? So you develop this knowledge of seasonality items that belong in a niche of each particular season. In this video, I'm going to be talking about three fall winter fabrics for shirts made by Thomas Mason and crafted by the Gaudery into shirts that I'm wearing today. We're looking at their features and their stylistic uses. Stay tuned. So the first fabric up is what I'm wearing right now, which is called Balmoral by Thomas Mason. So each of these has a particular name, uh, usually named after a place in the UK. So Balmoral is 85% cotton and 15% cashmere, which is a fairly good ratio. You may see 5% um, cashmere, 10% cashmere. This is up to 15%, which is a good amount for shirting and probably for anything that has a cashmere blend. Um, it is done in a range of colors and has a bit of a texture to it, which you can see in the images in the video. Among the three shirt options for autumn winter, the Balmoral is the lightest and it can wear well in the autumn uh, into the winter. Uh, I would venture that you could even wear it in spring to summer, though it has certain textural features that make it more suitable for winter. It has a, a rougher texture that looks wintry. Um, and it is quite warm because of the addition of cashmere. Cashmere is known in knitwear for being light and at the same time very warm. So that's why it's a, considered a premium fabric or a luxury fabric. And that combination of being lightweight and having uh, the ability to keep you warm. So the shirt has those features. It's airy, it's light, but at the same time, very warming. So Balmoral, also the most expensive of the three fabrics I'll be talking about. Um, very interesting material. Uh, it's something that I would suggest you use a try out because of its softness and its comfort, which is again, another selling point of cashmere. And again, you can use it from the autumn into the winter. So the second fabric from Thomas Mason that I wanted to show you today is called Fife, and I'm wearing that right now. Unlike Balmoral, it is uh, not cashmere, it is 100% brushed cotton. Brushed cotton is a special treatment applied to cotton that gives it more of a fluffiness and raises the pile on the fabric. Typically, when cotton fabric is treated, it's singed, so the ends are actually burnt off to give it a smooth finish. Whereas with brush cotton, special metal brushes are used to raise that pile on the fabric and give it the fluffiness that's characteristic of the fabric. Brush cotton is very similar to flannel. If you're familiar with flannel, you'll know brush cotton. The typical distinction between the two that is expressed is the brush cotton is brushed on one side of the fabric, on one side of the cloth, whereas with flannel, it's brushed on both sides of the cloth. Now the brushing treatment, what the brushing treatment does to the fabric is it helps to retain uh, air, keeps warm air in essentially, and cold air out, I presume, which gives it that warmth, uh, which is ideal as a fall winter fabric. Uh, Fife is more difficult to find than Balmoral. If you go online and look up Balmoral, Thomas Mason, you'll find a lot of information on it, or a decent amount. If you search for Fife, Google that, you'll find almost nothing. So I recommend speaking to your shirt maker about the fabric. They have them in their Thomas Mason swatch books. So you'll be able to see it there and get more information that way, as I did from the Gaudery. As I said earlier, the brushed cotton is a warmer fabric. This is also heavier than Balmoral and therefore more casual. So I like to wear it with tweeds, um, like you know, flannels and tweeds, winter tailoring. And it'll definitely keep you warm. 
because it's heavier because it has a, a fluffiness to it i would not necessarily wear it with the tie i would wear it open collared in a casualish sort of way a smart casual uh, if you do want to wear it with a tie i would recommend something like a chunky cashmere knitted tie or something like a wool a heavy wool tie something that's meaty and chunky so meaty fabrics heavier fabrics pair with heavier tailoring and also heavier accessories so another thing you can do with uh, brushed cottons like the Fife is that you can wash them with a little bit less concern. Thomas Mason says you can go up to 40 degrees centigrade in the washing machine. Um, Balmoral was 30 degrees, so you have to exercise more care with the cashmere than you do with 100% cotton. I always like to exercise caution anyways with these. I don't want them to shrink. I don't want to destroy them. So I tend to wash things toward the cold end of the temperature, at cold temperatures in the washing machine, and definitely you don't want to dry them in a machine. You want to air dry them and just hang them up. So um, it's good that you can wash these more readily. On the other hand, you will need to because brushed fabrics tend to collect more hair, dirt, dust, and so on uh, because of that pile finish. Um, hairs from your head, stray hairs during the day, facial hair, anything that sheds will tend to stick on the brush cotton because of that uh, nap finish, that sort of pile finish. I also find that brush cotton fabrics may absorb liquid stains a little bit more because it's kind of spongy, again because of the finish. So you definitely need to have, you need to have the ability to wash uh, the shirts in the machine. So advantage on one hand, disadvantage on the other. Uh, but overall, the brush cotton, uh, Fife and others like it from Thomas Mason would be an excellent thing for even colder temperatures than Balmoral. I wear these through the winter. I've worn them outside when it's been fairly cold around freezing with just a sport coat over the top, maybe a little bit of knitwear and the shirt, and I always feel warm. So the last fabric I want to talk to you about from Thomas Mason is this, and this is called Sterling. It's another brush cotton that they make. Also difficult to find online. Search for Sterling Thomas Mason, you won't get much back. Again, speak to your tailor and get information from their swatch books to choose your colors. They have sort of a limited range of Sterling, kind of in neutral colors, muted colors. Um, this one is an off-white or an ecru. Um, with more of a gray in it than yellow. Uh, I like to wear it with other grays to give it a little bit of pop. And also I like to wear it with brown. Um, so it's not that much of a contrast if I'm wearing an ordinary white shirt. Um, Sterling is like Fife in being a brushed cotton, but it is brushed on both sides. So now typically flannel is a fabric that's brushed on both sides and that is distinguished from brush cotton because brush cotton only gets the brushing on one side. However, Thomas Mason still calls this a brush cotton and it's treated on both sides with the brushing. What that does is the fabric is already quite weighty, but having it brushed on both sides sort of doubles the um, ability to retain air or to prevent air circulation through the cloth and so that will keep you even warmer in the winter. Sterling is also different from Fife in that it is 80% cotton and 20% wool. What that does in addition to having the brushing on both sides is the wool adds odor protection properties which is the reason why wool is used in overcoats and sport coats and suiting and so forth. Wool has natural sanitary properties um, that help you stay fresh during the day. And so that's an advantage to it because it keeps you hot in the winter, but it also protects your clothes from a smelling bed when you are sweating or wearing these heavy shirts indoors in central heating. Uh, because it's wool, I also would exercise some caution in washing these. I wash them carefully, similar to cashmere, maybe even hand washing, but definitely cold or using specialty detergents made for wool and delicate fabrics. So even though you have to exercise a little bit more care when washing these fabrics, I think the advantages they offer both in terms of style and in terms of um, practical practicality uh, outweigh any inconveniences that are created. This is my go-through shirt for cold winters in the northern United States. I can wear it under a tweed like this. This is a herringbone tweed. Now, maybe with a light piece of knitwear, like a cardigan over the top of it, and I'll be warm temperatures freezing and below 
you had an overcoat and you're really all set. So to me, the sterling is a great example of how seasonal fabrics can help um, deal with individual conditions of particular seasons more than an all season item. Right, so definitely a selling point for seasonality in your wardrobe and specifically in your shirt selection. If you like that information, like the video as well, follow us at Gentlemen Scholars Club for more discussion of niche menswear topics, broader brand reviews and style tips. As always, thank you for watching.